Good morning. My name is Dale Leininga, and I'm the chair of the Board of Directors for Paxton Ministries. On behalf of the board and staff of uh, Paxton Ministries and our partner, Monarch Development Group, I'd like to welcome you to this groundbreaking today for Paxton Place, an affordable and attractive 37-unit senior rental housing development with substantial common amenities and support services located in the city of Harrisburg. It's a long sentence. <laughs> Without all of you, this would not be happening today, so we are appreciative. Do all of you have a program? Because we're going to follow that and just work our way through. One of the people, or one of the entities we did not invite was Florence. <laughs> she is here, and we're going to try and uh, be done before she decides to uh, give us more water. Okay, so... After we hear from some people representing uh, different organizations that have played a key role in making this housing possible, we'll have the groundbreaking and the photos, the reason why we're here, uh, followed by some light refreshments. We'll begin with an invocation, and I'd like to ask Reverend Tom Sweet, pastor at Marcus Square Presbyterian Church, and my pastor, to give the invocation. Grace to you and peace. Uh, Market Square is a downtown congregation with a long time involvement in homelessness and low income housing ministries. So we are thrilled beyond words to have been invited by Paxton Ministries to be a financial and spiritual partner in Paxton Place. Let us pray. Oh God, we, we do not so much invoke your presence, but thank you for it, for you are with us always. O oh God, creator of all that is and lover of our souls, you are the foundation of the building about to be planted in this ground. You are the one from whom our dreams and visions flow. So we are grateful for this vision given and received of homes rising up for those in need of them. Thank you for all who have nurtured and shepherded this project, supported it, and labored on its behalf in the wilderness of details to get to this day when the promised land of Paxton Place is now plainly in view. We pray that Paxton Place will blossom and flourish and thrive for many years to come. Within these homes may there also develop a compassionate community and a spirit of common good. May we build this house where love can live and all may safely dwell, where grace abounds and joy abides. May there be safety for those who will build Paxton Place and great anticipation by those who will live in it. May Paxton Place be also a home for you, dear God, that Christ our Lord will be present here, granting to all who enter the gifts of your surpassing peace and undying hope. We pray in the name of Christ Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Tom. <clears throat> This is an especially important day for us because it represents a significant marker in an event that, in an effort that began almost six years ago when the Paxton Board of Directors was challenged to look at ways that we could expand our ministry, knowing the need that exists here in our community. We currently provide housing and support to approximately 100 persons who are poor and often are challenged with mental illness or mental disabilities or just need that extra help each day. And that's in that big red building over there. The most common phrase we get from people when we talk to them is, we've driven by there hundreds of times, we have no idea what goes on in there. Now you all know it's a personal care home with uh, around 100 people who, who live there. In addition to, uh, we are also a safety net, we believe, for persons in Harrisburg who might otherwise be on the street or in places that are not safe or which not really meet their needs. After exploring a number of options, we decided to develop this vacant land where we now, where we now sit. And we decided to develop to build new housing for older persons with low income. On a personal note, I have lived in the city for 45 years, been a volunteer at Paxton Ministries for 30 plus years. I know I don't look quite that old. But this project is important to me for a number of reasons. First, it will provide much needed housing for the elderly in our city. Second, it allows Paxton Ministries to further its mission 
and meet more unmet needs. And third, it takes land that is now vacant and not taxable and puts it on the tax rolls, which will help the city at a critical time in its history. As we know, it often takes many people working together to accomplish large projects. There are three people who I'd like to introduce at this time without whom this would not have been possible. The first is Jody Smiley, to my right, our Executive Director at Tax Ministries. Jody is the Executive Director of the Large Personal Care Home, our community services, and of a uh, private business that employs persons with needs. If you see a little van or cars that go by that say PCS, they're, they're gray. It's a cleaning service, and it is growing and doing well, of which we're very proud. In addition to that, the board has asked Jody to help in this effort to expand our services. I don't think she anticipated that when she took the job that we would be going through this kind of four or five year effort. Uh, she's focused, organized, and has been a trusted colleague during this time. Jody. Words. It's great to see everyone here today. It really is. Each of you has been somehow a part of helping us get here. Uh, today we celebrate the beginning of the physical building, um, and we all know that, as Dale mentioned, safe, affordable housing is extremely important. Uh, but addition, in addition, from the beginning of our dreaming and planning for this, we wanted it to be something special that we built on this site. And our goal was to make this something that would serve a wide scope of needs for future residents. As we talked to people in the community, and in fact it was many of you who we talked to, we learned more about what our seniors need to stay active and healthy. We all know that connections with friends and family can boost the quality of life, including both physical and mental health. So we ask the question, how can we help the residents of Paxton Place age in place to maintain a healthy and active lifestyle? And we knew that we couldn't do it alone. This takes a collaboration with experienced partners. So we're very grateful for the partners who have committed to be part of this project. And you will later hear from Pinnacle Health, Messiah Lifeways, and the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank who are each bringing their resources and their expertise to help the future residents of Paxton Place. It really is an honor to have each of you here today on this important day to begin our new venture. We look forward to seeing the building take shape. Um, in fact, I can watch it right from my office window right over here. And will. And will, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I tend to do those kinds of things, people will say. Uh, but even more than that, we do look forward to welcoming the future residents of Paxton Place into their new home. So I thank each of you for being a part of that. Dale? Thank you, Jody. The second person is Mike Kearney, the president and CEO of Monarch Development Group. When we were looking for an entity that could help us with this development, the name that kept coming up was Mike Kearney at Monarch. Mike has been easy to work with very easy to work with actually, uh, knowledgeable about development in central Pennsylvania and provided a steady hand as we work through a new and complex process. We're pleased to have Monarch as our development partner in this project. Mike. Thank you. Thank you, Dale. Um, we, we actually um, were introduced to Paxton Ministries back in March of 2015. So our endeavor and work with Paxton Ministries started well over three years ago. And Monarch often, almost all the time, is partners with a nonprofit organization within a community in order to do our developments. Um, we we're so happy that we were introduced to Paxton Ministries. And I was one of those people that the first meeting I attended within their, their building next door said to them, wow, I, I finally know what you do here. And um, anybody that doesn't know Paxton Ministries, I would encourage you to get to know them. They are an awesome organization. The mission that they have and what they do for the people in that building is just incredible. Um, so I'd encourage you to get to know them. So we're really proud to be their partner in developing this vacant piece of ground. Um, there are a number of groups that helped us along the way. Um, our development team members, uh, Kramer Marks, um, Eric, I see you in the back. Thank you for coming out today. Um, is our architectural firm, and you'll get to see this beautiful building rise out of the ground based on their, their design. 
uh, Gem Con Gem Construction Group or Gem Group. Sorry, Jessica um, is our c contractor. They're a WBE organization um, here in the city of Harrisburg, and we're really excited to have this partnership with their company. And we're looking forward to actually developing other tax credit developments with Gem Group. Um, our engineer, Bob Fisher. Bob, thank you for coming out for the groundbreaking today. Has done a great job in the layout and design of the, of the, the property here. And uh, Dermot Kennedy, who's our tax attorney, um, thank you, Dermot, as well for your contribution. Again, we started three over three years ago in lining up the financing, and it takes a lot of hard work and a lot of perseverance to get through the financing. Um, there's several layers of funding um, that were provided. Uh, we'd like to thank MidPen Bank, who is our partner investor in this development. Um, they made a substantial contribution, and we can't say enough about working with your local, regionally-minded banks. Having a partner like MidPen, um, we're very grateful for, for their uh, partnership on this project. Also, Impact Harrisburg. Um, one thing that's unique about this development is that we were just awarded credits a few months ago. Deals don't close in two or three months. They usually take several months to close, and it was that the funding from Impact Harrisburg to Paxton Ministries that got this deal off the ground quickly. Um, it was instrumental in making this happen, which really was the point, I believe, of Impact Harrisburg was to get things going within the city. Um, also, Dauphin County. Dauphin County is a contributor um, to this development as well through their housing trust funds. Um, we'd like to thank Dauphin County, um, as well as Paxton Ministries and the generous donors that contributed money to Paxton Ministries to help fill the financing gap that we had on this development. So we'd like to thank, thank Paxson Ministries and the, and the generous donors that helped to make that happen as well. Dale? Yeah. Thanks, Mike. And there's a third member of this foursome that's been working together for years. Brandon, you want to just stand? I know you don't want to, but would you please? Uh, Brandon Johnson is with uh, Monarch. And he not only knows what needs to be done when, by whom, but has an ability to get lots of other persons to do lots of things. Do I hear that response out there from all of you who worked with him? Um, he does this with a smile and an amazing amount of tolerance and patience in explaining complex things to people such as myself. So, thank you, Brandon. Okay, let's move, let's move on and hear from some of, our, some of the people who've helped us get this far today. And the first to give a few remarks is the Mayor of Harrisburg, Eric Papenfuss. Thank you, Dale. Good to see everybody uh, this morning. A um, couple, couple things. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations to Paxton Ministries for all that you do for the community. We are lucky to have you. I know firsthand the good work that you perform on a daily basis. And uh, thank you for having the vision to create something great and wonderful in Harrisburg. As we look behind us, you see an open field. And um, it took you all to see uh, that structure, that amazing building. We have a, a bit of a housing crisis in Harrisburg. There's not enough quality, affordable housing in really any of our neighborhoods. In fact, the city, working together with um, the Housing Authority, the Redevelopment Authority, and others, just completed a major housing study, which will be released uh, coming up here in October, which, uh, which really delves deeply into, into the market and what we can do about it. But a project like this is key, and if I can, I want to put it in the context of a couple other housing projects, one of which uh, is completed, another of which is underway, all in different quadrants of the city, each of which uh, is leading to um, a, a slow but progressive solution to how do we get better, more affordable, quality housing in our city. Um, I want to mention the, the, the Veterans Housing Project that was recently completed, another tax credit project that happened in Uptown Harrisburg near the hub, Harrisburg's Uptown Building. It's a remarkable project. Like this building, uh, it's, it was brand new construction uh, on what was an empty, uh, an empty lot. Um, it's going to house uh, our veterans uh, in, in, in very quality accommodations, and it's also next to a major new um, uh, building called the Hub, which, is, uh, which combines a variety of uh, local workforce training initiatives and um, uh, uh, projects, all of which I think is, uh, is making Harrisburg uh, healthy and vibrant. In addition, in, uh, in Allison Hill, not far from here, 
Uh, I was just there for the Hispanic Heritage Festival over the weekend, and it is amazing. There's there's not one, not two, but three brand new buildings uh, emerging there, right at the intersection of Derry and Mulberry and 13th Street, um, uh, each of which is going to provide, again, quality, affordable housing options for people in Harrisburg. And then you have uh, the 37 units that are here. All told, that's uh, I think that's uh, getting close to about 150 brand new units, um, uh, all of which I think will uh, potentially lead to a, uh, a series of, of, of uh, you know, a growth in, in Harrisburg's population. One of the things that we have to do um, is to continue to get more people to move into the city and as long, or stay in the city. And uh, projects like these will, um, will give people options that they don't currently have, and, and that's tremendously important. Um, another thing to, to note is that uh, if, you, if you listen, it's very quiet. And we are in a, uh, we're in a neighborhood. We're in a residential setting. And uh, one of the hallmarks of this project, and, and perhaps one of the, the reasons that it's going to be so successful in the end, was the painstaking way in which Paxton Ministries worked with the community to address their concerns, uh, whether it was of traffic or noise or, or, or any of those things. There were a series of public meetings, a series of uh, hearings at City Council, all of which has led to, I think, a, a project that is not only now embraced by the community, but will stand the test of time. So... That, that is tremendous. All of these things uh, could not be done without, without partners. Uh, I want to recognize uh, especially Impact Terraceburg, which is here and will be, be speaking in a moment. Um, they've not only supported um, the projects that I've mentioned, but they also have supported uh, the Salvation Army, which was, uh, I think, uh, the, the last ribbon cutting here about a week ago. Another um, multi-million dollar investment in Harrisburg that's going to provide services. You put that together, these projects that are currently in the works are about to happen, and you begin to see uh, a city which is really uh, poised to, to take off. Um, I think you all know about the, the courthouse. Uh, you all know about the, uh, the new state archives buildings. Uh, you, you've, you've probably seen the construction downtown at the hospital or at PHFA. One of the things you might not know is that um, the city is also sort of working behind the scenes to, to um, help tie all that together by reinvesting in all of our parks and playgrounds. And I'm pleased to say we recently cut the ribbon on four brand new, completely renovated playgrounds in each, um, uh, all in different neighborhoods of our city. A fifth one underway for next year, a sixth one in the planning stages. 29 parks and playgrounds literally knitting the city of uh, Harrisburg together. Um, it's almost fitting that a uh, municipal waste truck is turning uh, or coming by, right? There, there, there we are. Um, the city is also investing in our public works facility right here on Paxton Street. Um, uh, that is a, a multi-million dollar purchase and uh, eventual upgrade, which uh, has provided uh, quality jobs for this city. And I want to thank you all as well for, um, for being committed to Harrisburg. I know we are right on the city line. Literally, I think we could, uh, we, could, we could lead the city if we went in that direction. So the fact that you chose to do this in Harrisburg, um, improving this lot, is, uh, is really um, very much to your credit and very much appreciated by all of us. So I know there are a lot of speakers, but congratulations to all of you. I was there in the beginning. I think you started this project about the same time that I was elected. Um, we had meetings, sort of after meeting, and uh, like, uh, like many of the projects I've mentioned, it really sort of all came together in the end by so many people working hard, wanting to see this happen for Harrisburg. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay, the next person who we want to hear from is President of Harrisburg City Council, Wanda Williams. Good morning. Good morning. I'm honored to be here at this groundbreaking today to be a part of the ceremony to construct a multi-family dorming for seniors. The city of Harrisburg has many senior citizens who cannot afford to live in their homes today. With the rising cost of inflation, this newly constructed building will allow our residents to live in a safe, affordable dwelling that accommodates their needs. On behalf of the Harrisburg City Council, we thank you for your commitment to seeing and serving one of our most vulnerable populations. And then on a personal note, let me say this. As a City Council member, I had an opportunity to hit about 8,000 homes. 
And during that time, I interacted with a lot of senior citizens who cannot afford to up the keep of their homes today. So one of the things that they expressed to me was affordable housing. They, they could not afford to go out in the suburbs because that was too much. It was $1,100, $1,200 for housing apartments. So this project is very, very dear to my heart. I can now go to my members and my citizens and residents of the city of Harrisburg and tell them that we have a unit for senior citizens that they can now afford. So to the PACS Ministries, I thank you. And anything that you need from Harrisburg City Council, we are here to help you. Thank, thank you. you. Okay, the next person we'll hear from is from Impact Harrisburg, our Executive Director, Sheila Dell Ford. Good morning, everyone. How are you? It's a beautiful day, isn't it? It's okay. The rain is okay, I guess. Not so much. Not so much rain. Just a slight drizzle to keep the ground a little moist so we can plant things and they grow like this. I bring greetings and salutations on behalf of uh, the Board of Directors of Impact Harrisburg. And somewhere out there is Gloria Martin Roberts. I'm looking, would you come up and stand with me, please? Impact Harrisburg is a private nonprofit with the mission of creating and enhancing economic development within the city of Harrisburg. I am pleased to be joined today by two board members, Gloria Martin Roberts whose leadership is well known and greatly respected throughout our region and who also served for some years as a member of City Council and in uh, the capacity of president of that body. I am also joined by another board member, Dale Laninga. Dale, it's so good that you were able to make it today. That's a little <laughs> joke. <laughs> who obviously is serving in sort of two roles, if I may, today. Dale is, um, like Gloria, a longtime community volunteer and leader. And like many leaders, he wears more than one hat. He serves as a member of our board, and he is also the chairperson of the board of Paxton Ministries. I call that harmonic convergence. I don't know what you call it. That's what I call it. These two individuals are among the nine members of the Impact Harrisburg Board who bring to our work tremendous insight, wisdom, and love of our community. That love, that went, that insight, and that wisdom is interwoven with a fierce passion to continuously improve our region. They, my board, our board, understood the inherent value to seniors of the Paxton Place project. I should also note, parenthetically, that Brian Hudson the CEO of PHFA, the provider, PHFA was the provider of the low-income housing tax credits, is also an Impact Harrisburg board member. In fact, as I recall, to a person, every member of our board understood the emergent need to build affordable housing for seniors so that those who have contributed to building our communities will be provided the opportunity to, as Jody eloquently stated, to age in place. I've been informed by Jody and others that Impact Harrisburg's early contribution to the Paxton Place project, which our, 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 our grant was used for planning purposes and obtaining various licenses and such, and I've been informed that that helped Paxton to obtain the necessary tax credits and to position itself to become the first of about 46 LIHTC, that's a lot, right, tax credit recipients to close on its project financing. I tend to be a little competitive. Let me say that's really good. I, that's my personality. That's nice. Good job. Okay. Closing, let me say this though. Closing is good. If you've been through a closing and we all have at one time or another, we know how laborious it is, right? It's a huge deal. But I have to say, now comes the really hard part, <laughs> the building. It's going to be fun. Your project, I say this to all of you at Paxton, your project is a wonderful, state-of-the-art initiative, most particularly because it provides the opportunity to link housing with health care and other services. 
that's a big deal, folks. That's a big deal. You have seen the statistics that reveal the demographic transformation taking place in our nation. And right here, um, the mayor and Ms. Williams alluded to that, Council President Williams. The Census Bureau says by 2030, the number of Americans aged 65 and above will exceed 74 million. They're not all here, but that's a lot of folks. In a few years from now, a fifth of our population will be seniors, myself included, as Ms. Martin Roberts recently reminded me. That's fine. <laughs> um, as the pastor said, this is good. It is good to build a place where love will live and safely dwell. I think those were the words that were used. So again, congratulations on your success to date. You are well on your way. And best wishes that all things necessary to bring your project to fruition, to take that vision and truly make it a reality will go your way. As Council President Williams said, we are with you all the way. I am certain that before we know it, we will all be gathered here once again for the ribbon cutting. I look forward to that day. On behalf of the Impact Harrisburg Board, I thank you. Thank you. Okay, our next speaker uh, was going to be George Hartwick, Dauphin County Commissioner. He uh, cannot be here today. It is an illness in his family. So, uh, someone delivered a proclamation from the county, which I will read. It says, We, the Dauphin County Board of Commissioners, are delighted to celebrate the start of construction on Patson Place at 1100 South 20th Street in the city of Harrisburg. Our next speaker is our state representative, Patty Kim, who's been supportive from the beginning of our project. Welcome. Good morning. After working briefly with uh, Jody and Dale, a phrase came to mind. Pray as if everything depended on God and work as if everything depended on you. Jody and Dale look like really nice people on the outside. <laughs> but when you work closely with them, they're dog on bone. Patty, why don't you put this letter to Brian Hudson? Now. Okay, okay, Jody and Dale. Patty, why don't you set up a meeting with Brian Hudson on this date at this time? Uh, yes, sir, ma'am. <laughs> I did very, very little, but I was able to connect good people with a great vision, with good people like Brian Hudson, who was sold from the very beginning. The history of Paxson Ministry has been quiet, humble, but they've changed lives for years and years. So it would make sense to expand their, their base and focus on senior citizens. Just because you have lived in a means does not mean you have to live in squalor. And I know with their Christ-like vision and their care, this is going to be just as successful as the one next door. Thank you so much and welcome to Harrisburg. Thank you, Representative Kim. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce Holly Glauser from the Pennsylvania Housing Finance Agency. PHFA was instrumental in awarding the tax credits to this development. And, uh, worked feverishly to help us accomplish our timeline of getting to, to this point today. So, Holly? Thank you, Mike, and, and good morning, everyone. Um, I think we've heard his name, Brian Hudson, maybe more than once already from the previous speakers. And I'm here on behalf of Brian. I know he personally, as a lifelong resident of Harrisburg in this community, really wanted to be here. But I know his spirit is here, working obviously with Impact Harrisburg and working with Paxton Ministries and, and Monarch. Um, it's interesting, as, as everybody was mentioned, setting up these meetings with Brian Hudson. In the last two weeks, I probably have had more conversations with Brian Hudson about getting to closing. So, uh, you know, he is here in spirit, and I am sure I'm thinking about it today. Um, as, as some of the previous speakers uh, spoke about, I think one of the hugest challenges we have in the Commonwealth, obviously, is affordable housing. And some of the statistics have been talked about of the challenges. Um, we receive over 100 applications. The number we funded, funded this year is 39. So, Sheila, you were off by a few. So think about the com competitive nature of you. Yes. yes, it's much better. If you think 30, <laughs> out, out of 39 versus 46, that number is good. Um, and it's really one of the challenges we have because out of the 100 applications, you know, every single one in many communities throughout the Commonwealth is needed because the numbers are there that support 
the goals. Um, we actually just put together some demographics and some data. There are only 38 affordable housing units in the Commonwealth for every 100 persons that need it. The other pieces, and especially in the senior space, we've talked about rent burden. It is such a huge issue. 74% of the low-income residents in the Commonwealth are rent burdened, which means um, more than 30% of their income are used for rent. That's a huge number. When you talk about, especially in the senior set, um, prescriptions and, and medical needs and everything else, those numbers really do bring it home. So having this brand new, great um, apartment opportunity in this part of the city is just huge. And so really, on behalf of PHFA, we're really pleased. I know some of the other speakers, are. we've talked about partnership. It's having services available to the residents in the locale that really makes it happen. So that's what made you one of the 39 and got you to the finish line. So congratulations to Paxton and Monarch and to, and to the city of Harrisburg. We're really pleased to be a partner in this endeavor. Congratulations. We knew that it was something that we needed to be a part of. So we made the decision to make an $8 million investment through the purchase of federal low-income housing tax credits to support this cause, and we're very proud to do that. As a community bank, that's our role. We support all of the communities that we serve, but we're very loyal to Dauphin County because that's the county where this bank was started 150 years ago. So this is very near and dear to us. Paxton Place is going to serve an, as an important cornerstone to this community, and we applaud your efforts. We're uh, developing this space and the amenities and the services that our seniors need is obviously so important, and we're very grateful for the opportunity, so thank you. Thank you, Heather, and uh, to Mike Peduzzi and everyone at MidPen Bank, thank you very much. Um, Next, I'd like to introduce Ray D'Agostino from Lancaster Housing Opportunities Partnership. And I must state that when I originally said my thank yous to our lenders, I forgot a very important one, um, Ray and the folks from LHOP, and also the banks that participate in that loan, Penny and Bank and First National Bank. We really appreciate their efforts as well, Ray. Uh, good morning, everyone. Well, it's such an honor and a pleasure to be here today to celebrate the start of a project that will fill a tremendous need, as you've heard, here in Harrisburg. Uh, it's particularly an honor for Lancaster Housing Opportunity Partnership, or we're affectionately known as LHOP, uh, to be part of this project, which is a groundbreaking project in several ways. Uh, pardon the pun. Uh, this is the first permanent mortgage loan that we are doing um, in our history through the Lancaster, I'm sorry, the Local Housing Investment Fund and Trust of South Central PA, otherwise known as LIFT. It's a regional revolving loan fund to help projects like this that have affordable housing or mixed use uh, projects be able to get to the finish line. It's our first loan in Harrisburg and it's made possible by the first long-term investments into the fund and as you heard by Penyon Bank and First National Bank. Uh, Paxton Place is the first senior low-income housing tax credit project, I understand, in Harrisburg. So a lot of firsts. We are proud to be one of many partners in this unique holistic housing development. While the building will provide housing for seniors, the entire project and how it will function will be multifaceted in its care and opportunities for the seniors who will live here and multi-generational in terms of its broader impacts. Another attraction for this investment is being part of a continued revitalization of Harrisburg, as you've heard. The location of this development is not only ideal for the intended residents with so many opportunities and amenities close by, but also for the immediate neighborhood and for the tax base of Harrisburg. As a Community Development Financial Institution, or CDFI for short, our work is to help people access and create affordable housing. LHOP's unique financing was the final piece of the development puzzle to bring the project to fruition. Thanks to all of our investors, our loan committee, the board of directors, and our staff, in particular Miriam Soto, who's here today, raise your hand Miriam, who did the underwriting for the project. Uh, we are able to bring projects like this to fruition that focus on what it will take to get the project 
done. That means making low loans that are below market low interest and are flexible in terms that no one else can make. I want to thank again First National Bank of Pennsylvania and Penyon Bank for being the investors into the fund uh, to make that happen. You see, without investors like those two and also MidPen, who's here today as the tax credit uh, investor, who are also investors in our fund, we would not be able to do this kind of project. And if we're not able to do these kind of projects with the kind of loans we're talking about, there's often a gap that's left at the end. It's very hard to overcome. And because of the investors into our LIFT fund, we were actually able to eliminate the gap and do a first mortgage without any other financing. Very tough to do, and we're very proud to do that, and we thank, again, all our investors. So congratulations to Monarch Development Group. I want to name all the partners, because this is truly amazing uh, what a collaboration you have here. Monarch Development Group, Paxton Ministries, Messiah Lifeways, Pinnacle Health, Central Pennsylvania Food Bank, Messiah College, Penn State Medical School, I understand we'll have a, uh, a place here, the City of Harrisburg, Dauphin County, and of course PHFA. Congratulations on this groundbreaking effort to provide a dignified and holistic place for our parents and grandparents to be nurtured in their twilight years, regardless of the status of their income. When completed, this project will be a testament to the power of collaboration. It will be, will set the bar, quite frankly, for the future of senior housing in the region. And we look forward to celebrating with you at the ground. Or I'm sorry, the ground grand opening. Uh, thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Ray. Thank you so much. Uh, in addition to the funders that you just heard from, we have some people here today who provided. Uh, generous donations to Paxton Ministries to help us fill a gap and we're grateful for those contributions from Nick and Mim Fry and Ron and Lenora Stern. Thank you so much. So it's my privilege to introduce the partners. We've talked about what makes this special. It's those, it's the building plus. And if you take a look at the graphic there, it shows the things that we considered. What is it that people need to stay active and healthy? And it's looking at all those aspects of wellness. And that's why we worked with partners who have that experience and expertise. And the first I'd like to introduce is Jessica Ritchie, who is the Vice President and Chief Development Officer of Pinnacle Foundation. So when you talk about affordable housing, what goes hand in hand in that is access to health care. And we've actually had a very long partnership with Paxton Ministries. The foundation underwrites an LPM position here over in that building to help uh, access, you know, their residents have access to health care and wellness and health education. Um, so when Jody approached us, there's two things I know. As you get bigger, your health care needs are going to grow and we're going to have to be there and we're happy to be there. The other is, as Patty alluded to, you don't say no to Jody. So I took a tour, was so impressed with everything, and um, we're just so happy to be part of this next phase for you. So on behalf of Phil Garnaschelli and our P Pinnacle Health Foundation board directors, congratulations on this milestone. I know you've worked very hard, and we're happy to be there as you go into the future. Thank you. And thank you, Jessica. Uh, the next person I'd like to introduce is Kurt Stutzman, who is the President and CEO of Messiah Lifeways. Thank you, Jody. And uh, on behalf of Messiah Lifeways, I want to offer our heartiest congratulations to you, Jody, to Dale and the, the Paxson Ministries Board, and up to all the residents and staff as you mark the beginning of this journey to create this wonderful thing called Paxson Place. We're grateful to everyone who's played an important role in making today possible. In 1896, the Messiah Home was founded at 1175 Bailey Street here in Harrisburg. By the early 1930s, our founders were championing a plan to move to a larger site, and, and we are at that site today. The Messiah Home on Paxton Street was built in 1936, and for many years, this address was home to our ministry in serving older adults. Although we moved again in 1978 to the Messiah Village campus in Mechanicsburg, our past is deeply appreciated. What an honor to be back now, some 40 years later, to partner with so many outstanding organizations 
that resonate with the goal of bringing affordably excellent housing and programming to this neighborhood. Thank you for inviting us to join today's festivities and may you sense God's guidance and provision throughout the building process. You can be sure that we'll be cheering you on and looking forward to fostering community, wellness, and lifelong learning when Paxton Place opens its doors. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. And now I'd like to introduce Joe Arthur, who is the Executive Director of the Central Pennsylvania Food Bank. Let me just add that these three partners who are all speaking are partners we work with today and are very helpful to things we do each day now with Paxton Ministries. And this is a next step in those relationships. Thanks, Jody. And congratulations, Jody and, and Carl. Um, we're proud to be here, and you might wonder why, why would the Central Penn Food Bank uh, be here? Um, first of all, I, I seeing Ray from Lancaster, and we work together in, in Lancaster in our mission work. Um, I don't know if you know the early history of Pennsylvania going back to colonial times, but Dauphin County was carved out of the original Lancaster County, and I think he's trying to get it back a couple, a couple acres at a time. No, Elhop does great work, as does everybody else that's here. Um, I also am a, a yes person for Jody. So uh, a, a few years back when I did my first tour of this wonderful Paxson Ministries here, I was one of the people, uh, when my staff member brought me here, I was like, there's a building there? Like, uh, and and it, it, it's true, but what's going on inside there uh, is beautiful work. Um, we help uh, provide uh, food, uh, healthy food, to folks in need that are already uh, being served by Paxton Ministries. Uh, and I was delighted to be asked to even uh, do a letter of support. So uh, I couldn't just stop there as a yes person. I had to be a, a yes squared. And I said, you know what? We do have a, a little bit of income from our endowment fund. Uh, we'd like to make a contribution. It's, it's small on the, uh, in the scope of dollars, but somewhere in this place, there'll be a healthy demonstration kitchen. And we are looking forward to sitting down with residents, bringing in folks that could uh, uh, help them understand how to cook and, and eat a little bit better, a little bit healthier. Uh, and that's even harder when you're on a low budget. So that's why we're here. Uh, we love the project and uh, congratulations, Jody. Thank you, Joe, for your, for your comments. Okay, well, we've now come to this point in the program why we're here, which is the groundbreaking. One, two, three. <laughs> <laughs>